the other surgical procedures which are not routinely monitored are hip procedures. In hip surgeries, um, sciatic nerve is at risk of injury, uh, including tibial nerve and peroneal nerve, and should be monitored. And there's a documented and there is a publication uh, about uh, monitoring the peroneal nerve and tibial nerve in hip surgeries. The different type of hip surgery where neuromonitoring can be performed and can minimize the post operative deficit includes total hip replacement, uh, acetabular surgeries, uh, femoral head replacement, um, arthroscopy. So, uh, different surgical procedures also as a sacroiliac joint procedures. Uh, so, these are the procedures where the risk of injury to the nerve is high. And that is because of the lot of stretching and the movement of leg is performed may cause injury there. So, we are going to talk about the hip orthoscopic procedure today. So, because there are so many different procedures, but we're just picking one of them uh, to get the idea that how we can benefit uh, the patient in this surgical procedure. So, what is uh, hip orthoscopic surgeries? The orthoscopic so, so hip surgery is routinely performed to treat uh, to treat various hip disorders. Uh, there's a lot of leg uh, traction. Uh, for hip stabilization and which causes the stretching of the sciatic nerve and this which may cause either a temporary or permanent sciatic nerve injury. If it is a permanent, uh, it may cause uh, weakness of the limb, which may cause a foot drop. So, so I'm presenting this case where we monitor and uh, documented and did a study on 10 patients with the multimodality monitoring in hip uh, orthoscopic procedures. So we performed a retrospective review of the 10 patients um, who went under uh, orthoscopic hip surgeries uh, with neuromonitoring. Um, we have six females and four males and aged from 47 to 58 with the mean age of 48 to 9, 48.9 years. The procedures were equally divided in 50% 50, 50 male, uh, sorry, 50% left-sided, 50% right-sided. Uh, hip procedure. The recording setup included other nerve for upper SSCP for control and positioning, posterior tibial nerve and peroneal nerve SS and saphenous nerve. So we did three lower extremity, posterior tibial, peroneal and saphenous nerve. For, so we were covering the sciatic nerve and femoral nerve for any stretch injuries. For MEP, uh, for lower extremity MEP and hand MEP for the control and EMG from all the lower muscles. The trainer for was performed from the foot muscle uh, to monitor the level of muscle relaxation. Um, so the search. so the gender distribution we have um, uh, on the left side. Then we have different age range from uh, from all these test patient, ten patient, and the surgical side left side we have five patient, and the right side we have five patient. So this is a monitoring type uh, for each patient. Uh, two hour forty six minute to the. The least time was 2.2 hours and one minute, and the longest time was three hours and six minutes. So this is a range, and and that is very important to document because longer the uh, surgery is, there's a longer period of traction on the nerve, which could may cause more uh, uh, damage to the nerve and both, uh, foot drop or muscle weakness. So when we performed the first case, uh, we updated the pro protocol after the first case. The first hip orthoscopic case we did, we did train of four peroneal nerve, SSP, TBL, and saphenous nerve, and MEP bilaterally from the feet and ipsilateral leg. So in the leg, we just did uh, adductor and quadriceps plus spontaneous CMG. After that, we reviewed the case and we added trainer four in all four extremities. Uh, we did all number of SSCP added as a control and positioning. We added lumbar potential because lumbar potential should be done in these cases. But they are very, very stable and monitored and, the, and lumbar area T12, L, uh, T11, L1, it is not in the surgical side and the lumbar responses are very stable and they are not affected by anesthesia and their combination of your stationary and propagative potential. And you can compare the ipsilateral side divided by the uh, contralateral side, it gives you the ratio. If the ratio drops less than 0.5, that means uh, there's a more than 50% drop. So you have to make sure you are doing ipsilateral divided by contralateral, not opposite. And the, for MEP, we added the bilateral hands, uh, 
adductors, quadriceps, tibialis anterior, gastronomias, and foot muscle plus EMG. So there are four patients uh, out of these 10 patients they exhibited changes during surgical man manipulation. And it was two patients had changes due to retraction and one patient has due to ischemia and one patient due to anesthesia. Uh, there was low mean heart pressure um, uh, and that could have masked the change in the the related change in that patient. So this is a summary of the data. So uh, with the red one are the one which uh, this was no recovery, the green signals uh, correspond to no changes from the baseline and yellow is uh, loss and then the recovery. This is a summary of the 10 patient uh, for all the different muscles. For each muscle, how it was recorded or had a baseline or no baseline and was recovery or not. So tibial nerve changes, we had this case from uh, one of the patient. So we have significant sudden drop in uh, cortical and transcortical and cervical because it was above, even cervical is above the level of surgery. So we have changes uh, on left side, but no change on the right side because it was a left side uh, hip case. So the surgeon was informed the detraction was removed, released, and then the signal came back. So otherwise the patient would have focal um, with the deficit. Now, Peroneal nerve. So this patient, uh, we see left or right peroneal. We have bilateral drop. So and have drop in cortical and transcortical responses, and that could have been due to drop in mean arterial pressure or uh, or anesthetic effect. Cephalus SSP. The cephalus SSP. We had a clear change. Uh, we had drop more than seventy percent drop uh, on the left. So. Um, uh, cortical and transcortical, and when this, the surgeon was formed, the traction was removed, the signal came back. MEP was also uh, significant changes and it was recovered during the procedures. Uh, and the reason uh, di discussing these and presenting these is that uh, peroneal nerve SSP, tibial nerve SSP, SFNS SSP, and motor evoke potential, they can decrease and improve or recover during the surgery. And so that's why it's important to monitor all of these, none of, so one can decrease without changing the other one. So we have to monitor all of them. So all of these can be affected in these surgical procedure. If there was no effect of risk of damage to the femoral nerve, which is the main trunk for the saphenous or sciatic nerve or MEP, then we should not see any changes, uh, but, we saw the changes ipsilateral to the surgical side, so that um, help us uh, predicting that neuromonitoring can help in this patient. So for these uh, these ten patients, the closing uh, sixty four per patient have no changes at the closing. Um, Twenty seven percent patient have changes but had a recovery, and nine percent change they did not recover. So either change occur a change occur very close to the uh, closing or some other reason that there was no improvement time for the improvement. The summary for the MEP, there was no change in 47% of the patient and 13% there was a full recovery and in 37% there was no recovery and in 3% there was only partial recovery. Every step was taken uh, to, to do the recovery, traction was removed, the blood pressure was increased. In some cases, the corticosteroids were given. Um, but uh, still 37% patient, there was no recovery. And these are, uh, it is about to remember that these are very short, quick cases. So if there's a change and surgeon is closing, so you may not have a time to do recovery, but the patient woke up with no deficit. So the four patients, we have changes. 50% um, were due to retraction, 25% due to ischemia to the leg, and, and that ischemia was caused by tourniquet. And the, the last one, 25% uh, was due to anesthetic changes. So um, in conclusion, uh, multimodality interoperative neuromotoring can be beneficial and a protective tool during surgical procedures in the involving hip and acetabular areas uh, for surgeries. Uh, if you do early identification of these changes and give a quick response or real-time response uh, feedback to the surgeon, surgeon can make their um, 
they can change their manipulation or release the traction and it can cause uh, decrease or minimize the post-operative deficit due to traction on sciatic nerve.